Mahatma Gandhi once said, and I quote, A man is but the product of his thoughts. What he thinks, he becomes. I can't agree further because even the wise book says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You know what? The mind is not a vessel to be filled, but a fire to be ignited. A fire to be ignited with inspiration, with creativity, with originality, ideation, and initiative. In my best-selling book, Be Inspired Before You Expire, I say there are four kinds of minds in this world. I say number one, you have people with simple minds. You know what people with simple mind do? People with simple mind discuss people. They attribute all their misfortune, failures, and unhappiness to other people. They blame, they point fingers, and they talk about people as their core business. And number two kinds of mind are people with ordinary minds. People with ordinary mind discuss events. They discuss the past. They discuss history. They discuss circumstances. Like I once said, I say, if a cat sits on a hot stove, a cat will not sit on a hot stove again. But the tragedy is, the cat won't sit on a cold stove either, because whenever the cat sees a stove, they think about the burning sensation. So people with ordinary mind are stuck in the past. They are stuck in the circumstances that happened in their life in the past. Then number three, you have people with good minds. People with good mind discuss ideas. You've heard me right. They only discuss ideas. They don't do nothing about those ideas, but they discuss ideas. They know everything that's going around town. They know patterns, they know trends, but they just stop at knowing. They discuss ideas. And then number four, you are people with great minds. These ones, they do not just discuss ideas, but they go ahead and execute ideas. In my book I say, blessed are those who dream dreams and have the courage to pursue them, to make them a reality. The world is in need of people of great minds, people that dream dreams, that think thoughts, but then go ahead to execute them. You know, at any given time in life, you may be wondering, around the people with simple mind or your mind could wander around ordinary kind of mind or around good kind of mind but the mind that is needed in today's world in order for you to grow are minds that are great they think thoughts they dream dreams then they go ahead and execute them welcome to be inspired with pepe minambo Tonight, I'm excited to come again right into your homes with this exciting, disruptive, and mind-provoking episode where we are looking at the fifth top skill of 2025 according to the World Economic Forum. And skill number five is creativity, originality, and initiative. Talking about initiative my first book be inspired before you expire is forwarded by a gentleman called Eric Kimani a corporate leader a philanthropist a maverick executive and a passionate Rotarian by the time Eric forwarded my book he was the chief executive officer of KTDA the largest tea exporter company in the world. He's a mentor and someone that really inspired and challenged me a lot in the course of my own pursuit of career growth and development. Now, I remember in one of our conversations, Eric shared with me something that I've never forgotten about. And I, I do share that with as many people who care to listen to me in my forum as possible. And he said at one point in his life, he was really passionate and eager and driven and ambitious. He wanted to grow in his career. But you know, sometimes you want to grow, but there are no room for growth. Uh, I've had people say, look here, my, my boss still has like 15, 20 years to go. 
Now you wonder, what next for me? But the World Economic Forum say one of the greatest skills that makes you outstanding and gives you chances to grow is initiative. And, and Eric tells me, say, he went to his boss's boss and asked his boss's boss to give him his boss's job. And he was given. Now, wait a minute. He went to his boss's boss. There was no job advert. There was no opening in the company. He took the initiative to go to he, not even his boss, but to his boss's boss and ask his boss's boss to give him his boss's job. And trust me, he was given the job. You may ask, how? Well, he took the initiative. What is initiative? Initiative is doing the right things without being told. Initiative is doing the right things without being told. No adverts, no announcement, no opportunity on the table, but you take the initiative to knock. You take the initiative to ask, and you take the initiative to seek. So how did he go to his boss's boss and ask his boss's boss to give him his boss's job? And then he was given. Well, he had a case. He told his boss's boss, look here, my boss is a very experienced fellow and he's a mentor and a coach. He has coached us, he has mentored us to the point that we are now capable of doing his job. We understand his KPIs. We understand his job card. We can do whatever he does so well. And then he tells his boss's boss, I think this company is underutilizing the skills, the expertise, the brain and the experience of my boss. He said, look here, we are a big organization. We have regional roles. Why don't you give my boss something more challenging that is commensurate to his expertise experience, skills, and brain. And his bosses both saw a lot of sense into that. And guess what? His boss was promoted to a bigger role and he was given his boss's job. And that's how he started growing in his career to the point of becoming CEO of some of the most admirable organizations in the region. That's what I mean by the power of initiative. Most of us, we sit back, we talk about our bosses, we blame our companies, we talk about the restructuring that happened, we talk about the, the events that's happening. So remember the monologue, the simple mind, the ordinary mind, the good mind and the great mind? So most people are just good-minded individuals. Some of them are ordinary-minded people and majority are good-minded people. They don't take the initiative. Eric took the initiative, and the rest is history. I learned again a lot about this uh, from this gentleman. And, and one time I remember, he invited me to speak to his board of directors. And, and after the retreat, of course, we, we took a tour in town, in, 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 in the city where the meeting was being held. And we had different vans, and I sat in the same van with him. And the then company, acting company secretary of the company he was leading. And as the, 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 the tour van went around town, we, we were doing sightseeing, the, the lady asked the CEO and said, Mr. CEO, uh, I've been acting in this role for a while. And, and I think by now I un understand the ropes. So uh, it would be good for me to be given uh, 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 the, 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 the job. And I remember Eric telling the lady in my presence, he said, you know what? Power is never given. Power is taken. Why don't you build up your case and bring it forward? Let's look at it and then we can give you the opportunity. So ladies and gentlemen, most of us, we've not grown in our careers because we are waiting for good heavens to come our way. But no, it doesn't work that way. In this world, even the Bible says, that is Jesus and I quote, from the days of John the Baptist up to now, the kingdom of heavens suffer violence and the violent one take it by force. You know, sometimes people grow in their careers and develop in their trade and in their business and investment. 
because they take it by force. Opportunities are for grab. Take it by force. And the Bible says you do not have because you do not ask. You do not have access because you never knocked. You haven't found because you are not seeking. So initiative is a great skill for personal development and career growth. I would like to thank our sponsors tonight for making this possible. Centenary Bank, our bank in the business of transforming lives and offering financial solutions to millions of Ugandans in the past 40 years. And we are coming to you all the way from Lake Victoria Serena Golf Resort and Spa. Tonight, the fifth skill of the top 10 skills of 2025 by the World Economic Forum, creativity, originality, and initiative. We will be right back. Welcome back from the break. One of the greatest blessings of my life is the grace to have met great men and women. And as I always say, two things will change your life. The people you meet, and the books you read. A single conversation with the right person is more valuable than many years of studies. I once met this gentleman where I lived in Nairobi one time who was such an outstanding business person. He was such a Punishing success, if I may say, a great inspiration to many, a symbol of, you know, possibility to most people that knew him personally. Because he, his story was, you know, the kind of rags to riches story, genuine story of sheer determination, personal belief, hard work but more importantly, initiative. I'll tell you, initiative is one of the most powerful tools for personal, business, and career development. This fellow was employed at one point, and he say he hit a snag because the employment that he had was not adding value to him, his life, and his family. And he decided to take a sabbatical, take a break, and he had pressure from friends and family that look here, how will you survive by taking a break? He said, no, I just need to take a break. I need to think. Remember the first skill in our series was analytical thinking. The second skill was active learning and learning strategies. The third skill was complex problem solving. The fourth skill was critical thinking and analysis. And the fifth skill today is creativity, originality, and initiative. I think in this series, there is no one that embodies the first five skills according to the World Economic Forum than the gentleman I want to share the story about. So he tells me, Pepe, I took a break against the advice of everyone. My friend told my wife, your husband is going nuts. But I say, I needed a break to think about my life, to think about my future, the future of my family, my career. And he say, during his break, he got hold of a book. The book is titled, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And he would tell me, he said, look, I read this book page after page, and I underlined almost every statement in the book. He said, I read it like the Bible. He said, I could recite the book chapter after chapter because I kind of personalized, embodied the entire philosophy of the book. And he was fired up. And he decided to go around town and look for opportunities. And one thing that this book really steered in him was the urge of taking charge of his own life, his own growth, his own career, his own future, through initiatives. So he said the first thing he did was 
to take rides, you know, like a drive in high-end estates where you had mansions and villas, but at the same time you had many empty plots of land that were undeveloped. Then by just looking at so many undeveloped plots of land, you say, okay, you know what? I would like to figure out who are the owners of this plot of land. And he took the initiative to go to the Ministry of Land to find out who owned those pieces of land. And after figuring out the owners of the pieces of land, he said he set up a kind of a timetable on how to reach out to them. In fact, he told me, he said, look here, and some of these people live in these very high-end estates that if you just went in there as an ordinary person, they may not really consider even inviting you into their homes. And he told me he kind of got a friend who had high-end car to start going for those meetings. And he said whenever they would drive in those estates and go to uh, those big gates and they'll be given access to go in there. And, and, and he will introduce himself. He was an architect by profession. And he came up with a plan to say, look here, I'm, I'm aware that you own a piece of land in such and such an area. Uh, my name is so-and-so, I'm an architect. Have you ever thought about developing this piece of land? And don't you know that by just putting up structures on this piece of land, uh, if it is two acres or three acres, you can put in like, let's say, 14, 24 or 30 townhouses and it will cost this much to put up the structures and upon completion and they could be sold at market price at this much and it will require this kind of investment and when the whole deal is closed and this will be the return for you you know, out of your, your land. And then the person will go like, so how, how does that happen? And then he said, look here, I'm an architect. I can figure out, you know, how many houses we can, or apartments we can put in this piece of land. And it will cost this much. And, and, and we can approach the bank if you have all the documentation and, and we could make a development here. And then it, it serves both of us. And this would be my percentage and this would be your your return and, and, and this will be the project and then we pay the bank. What am I saying? I'm talking to you about a real life story of a man who had nothing but took the initiative to locate and identify owners of empty plots of land in high-end estates and eventually they bought into his idea and he went on starting developing real estate projects and to cut a long story short within a period of two to three years he became a millionaire in US dollar and the rest is history he went on establishing projects project that went on building thousands of homes for both high-end residents and low-cost housing. I say that's what I mean by the power of initiative. Look here, the world is not short of opportunities. The world is not short of wealth. The world is not short of resources. The world is full, is plenty of so much. But then, one of the keys that unlock the next level, the next growth, not only in entrepreneurship, but even in the corporate space, is initiative. But listen to me, initiative doesn't just come out of nowhere. It takes analytical thinking. Initiative takes a lot of active learning and learning strategies. Initiative takes really critical thinking and analysis. Initiative comes out from the need to solve problems. This man was solving his own problems of insufficiency, of lack of poverty, but he was also solving the problem of the other person of wealth acquisition. So by trying to solve these two problems, voila, he grew in his wealth and in his career and in his life. 
Now, I can't agree further because even Stephen Covey, the author of the legendary book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Listen, it took him 40 years to write that book. It is a book based on statistics, solid ones, based on research and interactions and, and experiences from about 40 years. He came up with seven habits. He said everybody that's highly effective, either in South America or in North America, in Europe or in Southern Africa or in Asia or in Middle East, they share common traits, they share common habits. And habit number one is proactivity. They are proactive. Proactivity is about taking the initiative, doing the right things without being told. Proactivity is about taking charge before you are discharged, acting before you are acted upon. You shape up before you are shipped out. That is proactivity. They make things happen. So, initiative, one of the most powerful tools for career, personal, entrepreneurship development. Tonight in the segment, Ask Pepe, I received a question from Jonathan K. Jonathan K said, how do you maintain your enthusiasm and passion in an organization where there are no career growth opportunities, no salary increment for years, and employee welfare is very meager and minimalistic. Wow, this is a complex question and it presents a complex problem. So what can I say? We've talked about the top 10 skills, analytical thinking, active learning, you know, complex problem solving, critical thinking and initiative. So my advice to you would be, why don't you use the skills we've been sharing here and go ahead and solve that problem because <laughs> that's a problem on its own already. It's a problem. So you need to solve it. So that would be my answer. So use the tools we've shared here and <laughs> solve the problem. As we come to the end of the show tonight, and the book that I'd like to recommend is the book my mentor shared in his story, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Remember, the introductory statement by Mahatma Gandhi? A man is but the product of his thoughts. What he thinks, he becomes. And the wise book says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so easy. So grab your copy of Think and Grow Rich and take initiatives that will change your life and your career. A big thanks to our sponsors, Centenary Bank, our bank, and coming to you all the way from Lake Victoria Serena Golf Resort and Spa. Tonight is the second last episode of our first season. Coming next Tuesday, it is our final episode for our season one. 